Hi everybody, Wave 3 News meteorologist Ryan Hoke here with a Hokey video blog update for Sunday morning, July 12th. Man, did we get walloped again by heavy rain and flash flooding. Many parts of East Louisville still underwater from St. Matthews over toward Windy Hills, even up toward portions of Jackson County and down toward Washington County, Kentucky. We still have some flooding issues. Douglas Hills turned into a geyser, at least some of the drains did. Susie sending in this photo. Jeffersonville. Doesn't look like anybody's going to be pulling out of their driveway anytime soon this morning across portions of Clark County, Indiana. It's unfortunate that we've had so much rain lately because that made this morning so much worse. The ground was already saturated. You add 5.21 inches of rain in St. Matthew's case on top of that, you get a near disaster out there. So definitely not good for folks living east of I-65 in Louisville today. Our SkyTrack camera shows that things are getting better. The rain has since long gone. You'll see that it's still plaguing portions of Marion County down toward eastern Taylor County, even into eastern portions of Adair County. Here's the deal. Uh, we do have a chance for some more stronger storms this afternoon, but that chance has decreased. These storms this morning kind of taking the thunder, so to speak, out of some of these storms for this afternoon. All this cloud cover still around areas of Louisville down toward the south. We've still got some lighter cloud cover. Uh, basically from Indianapolis on down toward Evansville and the rest of our area as well. So that's going to help to kind of keep the atmosphere stable. But what we are watching are areas basically down here that haven't seen as much storm activity. So this sector right here hasn't seen too much this morning. Those areas could destabilize uh, in an effort to bring us more thunderstorms for this afternoon. Rainfall totals, the digital storm accumulation from the Doppler radar product has actually been pretty accurate this morning, matching up well with uh, some of the gauges. 3.6 up there near Scott County, Indiana. You'll see northeast Louisville got walloped. 3.2 inches down there. Of course, we had the isolated 5.21 inches uh, down in St. Matthews earlier. Even Spencer County getting in on the 2.4 inches in that area. Average accumulation about 1.6 in that red box right there. So, I mean, we have just really bared the brunt of this along and east of 65 down toward Louisville and then way to the southeast of 65 once you got toward uh, Spencer County and Washington County, Kentucky. So now, this is pushing off to the southeast East. Flash flood warning, warnings are still effect, uh, in effect here for Louisville until 10.15. We've got the one to our south till 11 a.m. Uh, once these all expire, that should be it for the flash flood warnings for now until more thunderstorms develop. And we could see a flash flood warning or two this afternoon, but I really think this afternoon storm risk has gone down considerably because of all this. This really disrupts the atmosphere in a good way uh, for us. So we're just going to have to watch these areas that try to destabilize more so that we'll have more time to do so uh, as we go throughout the afternoon. Current temperatures in the 70s where we've had the rain, in the 80s already where we haven't. Yikes, that's where we could again get those thunderstorms. That's why we're talking about those areas out to our southwest. Here's what Futurecast does, and I actually kind of like the idea of what it's doing. It's basically just leaving us with a few scattered showers, some clouds through the afternoon, and no real additional storm development. Let's hope so. The 4-kilometer NAM I was just looking at here did have additional thunderstorms, even unfortunately some of them training over this area here with the potential for more flash flooding. Yikes. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I do like Futurecast's um, solution a lot better, not only because it's better for us, but it's better meteorologically based on what has already happened this morning. That's why the Storm Prediction Center has trimmed off the slight risk of severe weather for most of our counties. Hart, Green, Taylor, down toward Adair, still under this uh, as we go throughout this afternoon. Really, I was reading some of their discussion, and really they're keeping this in for more toward the midday period, to midday toward the early afternoon, because that wave of thunderstorm activity is going to have a little bit of a tail, a little boundary that pushes through. Might try to fire up some severe storms down here, but I think that'll be more toward uh, the Tennessee border, because this thing will be so far south by then that I think it'll really be have to be drawn down there. But as long as they're going to keep it in, we're going to keep an eye on it. The rest of us are under a marginal risk of severe weather. Any of these little pop-ups could briefly go strong to severe that we may see this afternoon. We'll keep an eye on them. All right, so that's today. Damaging winds, uh, possible in isolated spots. That's about it, severe weather-wise. Tomorrow is a whole lot more complicated and runs the risk of being a lot more dangerous, unfortunately. We're going to have to ramp up some of the wording on this one based on some of the data I'm seeing this morning. So Monday morning. We start out relatively calm. Storms will be ending before midnight if they do develop this afternoon. 
Uh, so there will be a relatively calm overnight period leading into a calm morning. And then look what happens. By 2.30, we've got an, another one of these MCS lines of storms knocking on our door. Some of the models try to dissipate this as it moves in because it's an overnight MCS that will be pushing in from Indiana that either will A, die, or B, re-strengthen with the instability of the day. Given what we saw this morning, and the meteorological process behind that, the untapped, humid, unstable air that that MCS went into during the overnight hours, when it wasn't even daylight, and how that popped up. I'm hard-pressed to believe some of the models that say this is going to die. So if this keeps going, this could present a widespread wind damage threat. Some of these cells out in front of it may very well be supercellular in nature and may rotate trying to put down a tornado or two. We'll have to see how that goes. The timing of this at best is superfluous because I think it's the overall risk that needs to be given here because the timing is going to change throughout the next 24 hours. The models are having trouble timing out the disturbances aloft above our heads coming through that will help to generate these storms. So the timing is going to change but the overall threat I think is going to remain the same. So that line of storms moved through. Again this is one run of one model we're looking at. So we get a break supposedly, as we go throughout Monday night, then another line moves through after midnight. That one, again, could have damaging winds. It'll try to be weakening, according to this model, but again, others keep them strong, and others uh, take two strong lines, two severe lines of thunderstorms through um, at those time intervals that you just saw, and others try to merge it more into one storm line that comes through early in the day and kind of leaves the uh, one overnight to, uh, to be one that dies off, kind of like what you're seeing here. So, uh, there's a few scenarios on the table for this, unfortunately, but with so much wind energy aloft, we're really going to have to watch this. This is one of those northwest flow scenarios that we typically get in the upper Midwest this time of year, kind of a knockout, drag out wind damage scenario up there, and uh, this is kind of making its way south for us this time of round, un unfortunately. And you know, you may hear on social media the word derecho, and the word derecho cannot be associated with this yet. Derecho is basically a long uh, live line of wind damaging thunderstorms that meets a certain criteria of which you can apply to a line of storms after it's done. You have to do damage surveys to first do that, to get that. Um, we can't we can't say that yet. All right, so what we can say is there's potential for widespread wind damage. Uh, some damaging hail is possible, but that's not going to be the big take-home threat. It's going to be the wind. And there is the potential for a few tornadoes. So this setup, again, involves that northwesterly flow. These storms coming right out of the upper Midwest. And uh, it's the strong winds aloft. We showed this graphic yesterday, but I think it's really good in demonstrating why this is such a serious threat, because these winds are going to be channeling right down to the surface in the lines of thunderstorms that develop and move through. I've created this graphic this morning. I've had to make some tweaks based on the latest data, but this is our best guess at this point. 3 p.m. on Monday to 6 a.m. on Tuesday, the main chunk of time when these lines of storms may be moving through. We're going to have to adjust this. Please stay with our latest forecast. It's going to change. We can't give you a 100% accurate forecast on this kind of scenario right now when we're over 24 hours out. We just can't. All right, That's meteorologically impossible. So you're going to have to stay with us on this one. They're the main threats again. Wind damage would be number one, number two, the hail, number three, tornadoes. And yes, flash flooding is going to be an issue. There may be a flash flood watch at some point uh, that gets issued because Obviously, we've already got problems now. Add more to it tomorrow, and yeah. <laughs> this is a terrible, terrible weather pattern, I'm telling you right now, both as a meteorologist and a, a resident of wave country. I'm, I'm sick of this. This is absolutely uh, uh, just kind of a headache for us. So we've got the storm chance, uh, the 60%, of course, for this morning, the ongoing activity, 40% this afternoon. We need to lower that based on the trends. Um, but yeah, here's the main, again, some of the times that we're looking at here after 3 p.m. And really, we need to extend that past midnight at this point based on some of the latest data. Uh, Tuesday could be severe again for our southern counties. Even for us here in Louisville and Point South, we could have some strong to severe thunderstorms. So we're going to have to watch that potential. Um, this is what we call in meteorological terms an MCS fest. An MCS is a mesoscale convective system. Fancy word for those lines of storms. So a fest of these lines of storms moving through one today. Uh, you know, we could get a couple tomorrow. Could possibly get another one on Tuesday. And then things settle down for the end of the work week. Whew, thank goodness. And those temperatures ramp up. We could get heat index values near 100 or better uh, as we round out the week. So hang on, folks. we got another few days of these nasty storms.
to keep track of here with the Wave 3 News uh, storm tracking team here. And then we'll finally get some more summer-like calmer weather toward the end of this week. Thanks for bearing with us. I'm meteorologist Ryan Hoke. Have a great day.